What up, Wes? Today I'm going to review Bad Pharma by the British physician and academic Dr. Ben Goldacre. The most serious issues with the pharmaceutical industry can't be easily explained with clickbait headlines. So Bad Pharma is a thorough piece of investigative journalism. It isn't really about the insane cost of medicine, it's about how drug companies mislead doctors and harm patients, which it says right on the cover here. This may be the most important book I've read this year. Bad Pharma was written by Ben Goldacre. He published his first book called Bad Science in 2008, which exposes bogus research about nutrition, vaccines, and homeopathy. And he talks a little bit about the pharmaceutical industry in this book. But when he was writing Bad Science, he probably realized that a whole separate book would be needed to cover the pharmaceutical industry. Exposing bad science is what Ben Goldacre has dedicated his life to, and now he works at the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine at Oxford. Though he kind of looks like a mad scientist, he's dedicated his life to combating the true mad scientists out there. The scientists that misrepresent pharmaceuticals to patients and to their doctors. So Ben Goldacre is a genius when it comes to identifying bad science and explaining why it's bad, particularly when it comes to healthcare. I think this book is an incredibly thorough analysis of the pharmaceutical industry's publishing and marketing practices and its effect it has on doctors and their patients. Much of this book is infuriating and will probably stick with me for a long time. So each chapter of this book illustrates a major way in which uh, pharmaceutical companies unintentionally and intentionally manipulate our perception on drugs. The first chapter is about how trial data goes missing when scientists are doing research. When researchers choose only to publish positive results, everyone will think that a drug works, when in reality, it may be no better than a placebo. So Ben Goldacre explains that this is a major issue that happens on a global scale. Chapter two is relatively short, and it lays out how drugs go from the laboratory to the market. Ideally, lots of people need to be monitoring and regulating drugs so that whatever is on the market is safe and effective. Chapter 3 is about how drug regulators like the FDA experience pressure from the industry, pressures from government, there's funding issues, conflicts of interest, and an obsession with secrecy. So long story short, regulators could do a lot more to keep inferior drugs off the market, and they could do a lot more to inform the public about the safety of what's already on the market. Even when we do have access to publish research on pharmaceuticals, the trials are often conducted in a way that's misleading, which might make a drug look more beneficial than it really is. So chapter four talks about how trials can be conducted with unrepresentative patients, patients that are much more likely to get healthy. Uh, trials are too brief, they measure the wrong outcomes, or the results are analyzed in an absurd way. It's shocking that this is so widespread even among the most prestigious and peer-reviewed journals. In chapter five, Ben Goldacre lays out how bigger and simpler trials could help us to determine not only which drugs are effective, but also which are the most effective. The last chapter of this book is the longest, but really got me riled up. It was kind of the climax of the book. Doctors should make medical decisions based upon which treatment is best for the patient. But pharmaceutical companies spend billions of dollars on marketing, which, for one, makes drugs more expensive, and two, erodes a physician's ability to practice evidence-based medicine. Marketing erodes a physician's ability to make the best decisions possible. Now, I just laid out all of the assertions that are made in this book. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Ben Goldacre spends the majority of this book laying out the evidence, explaining the best research done on the pharmaceutical industry around the world, and he provides so much evidence that I felt like I really had to muscle my way through this book. I definitely wouldn't recommend this book for casual reading, but what I especially like about this book is that Ben Goldacre lays out what we can do to take action. Many books like this will lay out everything that's wrong in the world, but never provide a call to action. So I appreciate that at the end of every chapter, he lays out very specific things that we can do to take action. There are two minor things that I would consider to be weaknesses about this book. 
This book was published in 2012, and I imagine a lot hasn't changed in the past five years, but I'm also curious to know how this book would have been written differently if it was published today. Otherwise, I've seen a lot of people complain about the style of this author's writing. There are some humorous bits, but it is technical, which is actually a good thing in my opinion. A lot of so-called investigative journalism sensationalizes the problems and fails to provide ample evidence to support claims. So in terms of accessibility, I would give this book a 2 out of 5. It's well over 300 pages and it requires some brain power to get through. Honestly, this book took me a while to read. But what type of person would give this book a 5 out of 5? I think a lot of people could easily get past the technical nature of this book. This book covers a major problem in healthcare that isn't talked about enough, and I think that the people that understand the magnitude of these problems would give this book a 5 out of 5. Ben Goldacre lays out things that anyone can do to bring about change, and I definitely recommend this book to people that work in healthcare and to those that intend to get into healthcare. Really, anyone who interacts with the pharmaceutical industry in a significant way should be familiar with this book and the ideas presented in it. This author also has some good TED Talks about bad science, um, so if you don't have the time to read this book, I recommend checking those out. But if you do have the time and the patience, I definitely recommend this book. Well, thanks for watching my review. I decided that I'm going to totally ditch the rating system. I think that giving a score out of 5 to a book is kind of ridiculous. Like, why do we do that? Instead of giving a rating, I think I'm going to start saying what type of person would be likely to give this book a 5 out of 5. So for this book, I would say that the wonk science activist type would really value this book. Anyways, I'll catch you later, bro. Peace. I think there's a raccoon back there.